Hello and welcome to my channel. I am your Sparks Stenographer. Today I am going to deliver you a legal dictation and the transcription number 11. Guys, if you like my video, then subscribe my channel and also join me on WhatsApp. So, ready for the dictation? 10 second, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Start. Now, the question that backs consideration in the light of the submissions advanced across the bar is whether the principle of natural justice were observed in the complaints or not. As stated herein above, Rule 81 of Rule 1976 does prescribe overgence of the principle of natural justice. From a close scrutiny of the inquiry report dated 29 October 1993, it transpires that the inquiry officer has found the petitioner guilty on the basis of the reply to the charge sheet submitted by the petitioner and other documents, but not a single witness was examined by the inquiry officer in the presence of the petitioner and also no date, time and place was fixed by the inquiry officer. It is not discriminable from the inquiry report that the petitioner was never granted any opportunity of personal hearing or cross-examine the witnesses and in the circumstances. There appears to be non-complaints of Regulation 81A of the 1976 rules which enjoins due observance of the principles of natural justice. In this connection, Article 14 of the Constitution of India may also be referred which clearly postulates that authority competent to pass orders is required to record reasons, which is one of the principles of natural justice governing exercise of power by the administrative authority. It is well enunciated in various decisions of the High Court and the Apex Court that the disciplinary authority has to apply his mind to the record apart from the finding recorded by the inquiry officer before coming to the conclusion whether the charge of misconduct has been proved against the delinquent. Merely asking the petitioner to submit an explanation, in my opinion, is not sufficient where it is proposed to impose a major punishment. There are two kinds of hearing, a personal hearing and second non-personal hearing. When it is proposed to impose a minor punishment such as withholding of increments or a fine or warning, a non-personal hearing would suffice. In a non-personal hearing, all that has been done is that the delinquent employee is issued a show cause notice to which he gives a written reply and on that reply, the punishment is straightway imposed giving reasons. In such a case, it is not necessary to hold a full-fledged oral inquiry giving the concerned employee an opportunity of producing his witnesses and cross-examining the witnesses against him. However, when it is proposed to impose a major punishment like dismissal, ordinarily a full-fledged inquiry must be held. This is because a major punishment not only has very serious consequences upon the employee but would adversely affect the family. Hence, the law imposes a stricter and elaborate producer requiring a full-fledged oral inquiry 
in cases of major punishment in such cases it is ordinarily necessary for the employer to issue a notice to the employee indicating the date time and place of the inquiry after appointing an inquiry officer on the date and time fixed the witnesses against the concerned employee is required to be examined ordinarily in his presence and he must be given an opportunity to cross examine them coming to the aspect of overwens of the principles of natural justice in the instant case it is explicit from a pursual of the inquiry report that no date time and place was fixed by the inquiry officer as stated here in above it would crystallize from a pursual of the inquiry report that the disciplinary authority did not reckon that the inquiry officer did not fix any date time and place and no witnesses was examined by the inquiry officer the apex court has rapidly emphasized for observance of the principles of natural justice in milangas t state we their workman air 1963 sc 1790 the supreme court propounded in clear words that it is an elementary principle that a principal who is required to answer the charge must know not only the association but also the testimony by which the association is supported he must be given a fair chance to hear the evidence in support of the charge and to put such relevant questions by way of cross examination as he desires